In this video, we're going to talk about structures, properties, and uses of some of the commonly used C1, 2, and 3 alcohols. So the first one we'll talk about is methanol, or also called methyl alcohol. That is going to be your one carbon chain, so methyl, CH3, OH. This is commonly used as a fuel and a solvent, a lot of times in shellacs and varnishes. It's commonly known as wood alcohol. And the early method for making methanol was to take wood, heat it to high temperatures in the absence of air so that you weren't actually burning it, you were just heating it to a high temperature. Now we actually get methanol by taking hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide and reacting them together to make methanol. Methanol is oxidized by alcohol dehydrogenase in the body, which is a molecule that is in your body, in your system. So if you consume methanol, what you are going to form inside your body is formaldehyde and formic acid. The, these can cause lots of issues, acidosis, blindness, optic nerve damage. So al methanol poisoning is actually commonly treated by giving you ethyl alcohol. Ethyl alcohol is the alcohol that you would consume in a liquor. So if you have methanol poisoning and you go to the hospital, what they're going to do is get you drunk. But the reason for this is this stops the oxidation of methanol because the alcohol dehydrogenase is instead going to react with the ethanol. So it stops the process of breaking down the methanol. So the methanol itself is not harmful. It's the byproducts that your body produces when you consume the methanol that can cause problems. So a little bit more on the ethanol. So ethyl alcohol, we've got our CH3, CH2, OH. This is the drinking alcohol or grain alcohol, the type that you would consume. It is oxidized by your body to form acetaldehyde. This is also considered toxic, and this is what causes any kind of hangover side effects that you might feel. However, it's further broken down into acetic acid. Acetic acid is the same thing as vinegar. So it's not toxic, not deadly, but it does go through this middle step that can make you not feel too great. Ethical, ethanol is made by yeast fermentation. So if you take grain and corn, rice and barley, you can ferment it using yeast to produce your ethanol. 18% is the highest concentration that you can get from yeast fermentation. To get any higher alcohol concentration, it would have to be distilled. So here's your reaction for your fermentation. You have your sugar that's present in the plant material that is then converted to ethanol by the yeast as well as CO2. So if you've ever done any kind of fermentation, you do know that some kind of gas is produced. That gas is the carbon dioxide. Excessive consumption of alcohol can cause liver damage, loss of memory, alcoholism, ingestion during pregnancy can result in birth defects, fetal alcohol syndrome. If you've ever heard of denatured alcohol, denatured alcohol is ethanol that has a small amount of toxic substances, usually methanol, added to the ethanol so that it cannot be consumed. This is ethanol that's produced for industrial purposes. Right? So we don't want people to say, oh, it's ethanol, I can drink it. It wasn't produced in a way that it's completely pure anyway. So to keep people from trying to consume it, they add other substances that does make it toxic. Ethanol is also used in gasoline as a fuel additive. The third alcohol we'll talk about is isopropyl alcohol, or 2-propanol. So we have our propyl and the alcohol group is coming off of the middle. So it's a 3-carbon monohydroxy alcohol, so a single hydroxy group. 70% isopropyl alcohol, which is mixed with 30% water, is what is marketed as rubbing alcohol. So you probably have some of that in a medicine cabinet. This can also be used to combat high body temperature because it evaporates very quickly. It leaves a very cool feeling on the skin. It does have a bitter taste. Toxicity is twice that of ethyl alcohol. It can induce vomiting and therefore it can't stay down long enough to be fatal. If it was oxidized in your body, it would produce acetone, 
which is not something that we want to have in our system. But again, because it produces vomiting, it doesn't stay in our system long enough to be broken down. Ethylene glycol is 1,2-ethane-diol. So here's your structure down below. You've got your two carbons and two alcohol groups. And also propylene glycol, or 1,2-propane-diol. So a propane group with the two alcohol groups. So glycol in general is a diol, meaning two hydroxy groups, that's attached to two neighboring carbon atoms. So that's why we can call both of these glycols, because the oxygen, there are the alcohol groups are on carbons right next to each other. These are colorless, odorless, and miscible in water, meaning they do dissolve in water. Commonly used as automobile antifreeze, airplane de-icer. What this does is it significantly drops your freezing point of water. Ethylene glycol is extremely toxic. Propylene glycol is non-toxic. So ethylene glycol, if you've ever heard about not letting pets or dogs drink antifreeze, they like it because it has a sweet taste, but it is toxic. It has the ethylene glycol in it. Propylene glycol is non-toxic, very commonly used as a solvent in drugs that are consumed. So adding that one extra methyl group completely changes how our body reacts to the, pro or to the molecules. Glycerol, 1,3-propane triol. So now we've got three carbons with three alcohols attached. For the glycerol, any general glycerol, you've got three oxygens attached to three neighboring carbon atoms. This is a clear, thick liquid. It's a byproduct of fat metabolism. So it basically acts as a biological antifreeze. Whenever you have animals that live in the Arctic, this helps keep them warm. It can be added to things like lotion, soaps, and shaving creams. It's what gives them kind of the slick feel. 